Okay, yeah, I'm back and uh, my rubber cement is now dry, so now I can start assembling this transition. Okay, now on my transition, I don't want this overlap piece to go anywhere near that excess. I actually, I want it centered right in the middle of the actual transition part. And what I want to do is I want to overlap it halfway on each side. And as soon as these touch, they're going to grab instantly. So you have to make this a uh, pretty good first attempt. And I'm going, to, I'm going to work from this end. I'm going to start here about a sixteenth of an inch from the end of the piece. And then put it down and then press it down here on this side. Okay, now this other side is kind of tricky. And what I'm going to try to do is I want to come in at an angle here on this one so that I'm just getting the edge up against the other edge. And then I'm going to flex it upward for the glue to grab, the rubber cement to grab. Okay, so I have my pieces together. Now I'm just going to let it flex up and then pinch it underneath on the, both of the ends. And there we go. Perfect. Now you're going to, the rubber cement on the inside, you can go ahead and take your finger and rub along there and you can feel it kind of balling up and then you can just kind of slide out all the excess rubber cement on the inside. If there's any on the outside, you can do the same thing. Now, the nice thing about rubber cement is if you mess it up, you can just peel it up, rub it all off, paint a new layer on, and try it a second time. So this way, you're going to get a perfect transition. And if I did this right, when I slide my tube in, it should go in really nice without spreading the paper apart. Yeah, that's the other nice thing about the rubber cement is if, you're, if it's too tight, it will spread apart just a little bit. It has a little bit of give to it, which is really good. All right. So now we're ready to start building the transition. And this one, I'm going to make a transition that is removable out of the top of the tube. So I want this transition to go on here like this, and I want the whole thing to slide off. So this is what I'm going to make. And I'll start with a, a, the body tube that's inside, which goes matches the small diameter of our transition. And I want to add a parachute loop to it so that I can attach a shock cord to it later. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my Kevlar. And I'm going to tie it around there. Tie it in a knot, and I'm going to slide it through a centering ring. Get that centering ring onto that tube. This is going to be a little bit tight because the centering ring was not made to go over the top of the tube with that uh, shock cord on there. Oops, I didn't have it tied well enough. Well, let's start over. Let's put it in like this. I'm crimping that a little bit, but that's okay. And I want to tie it around, tie it in a knot. Okay, I'm going to cut off that excess. Okay, and then I want to glue that down. And I got another centering ring here at the front. And all this is going to get glued down here like this. And I want all that flush to the end of the tube. Just like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and start gluing that up. Get some paper towels Randy, ready.
And I'm going to slide my green ring forward because I want it flush with the tube. All right. As soon as that glue grabs, we'll be in good shape. And then on the other end, I want to get some glue in that knot because that knot keeps wanting to come undone and then glue the shot cord right down, right up against that green ring. Now that green ring is our, our thrust ring here. It's going to prevent this shot cord from being pulled out. So I can smooth out my glue. All right, now I can put that one aside and I'm going to take my other centering ring and I've already done it, but uh, go ahead and glue it to the tube coupler. That's going to go into the front end of the tube and then we're going to glue this onto this ring. So I'll go ahead and put some glue on the end of that. Now just be careful not to use a lot of glue or it's just going to take longer to dry. I don't want any on the outside. I only want it on the inside, right up against that edge. Okay, make sure that it centers up really nice. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a layer of glue here on this end. see on my finger I pricked myself with the hobby knife. It's bleeding a little bit but that's okay. It's not a lot. I won't have to go to the hospital. All right so now our next step is I got a little paper disc and I'm going to just put that glue that over the end here and that is to prevent any ejection charges from going through this tube. Now, when that dries, allow that to dry, and then you'll notice that the ring may not be perfectly centered on your tube coupler. So you can take um, a sanding tee with some medium grit sandpaper and sand around, all around the edges at both centering rings so that none of the ring sticks over the tube coupler because you want it to slide into your tube nice and easy. And then after you do that, I'm going to take another ring. Now this is the same size diameter as the body tube. And I want to glue that over the top of this. I can do it over this end. Okay, now I don't want it flush with the centering ring. I want it back just a little bit, probably about a sixteenth of an inch. And the reason for that Ben Whitfield, Pueblo, Colorado. Can't say enough about Apogee Rockets. Quality service, they respond to your needs, they sell excellent products. In a world of shoddy, shabby things, it's nice to know that there's a company such as Apogee. I highly recommend them.